I overheard somebody talking to their client and the client said, what is this place? And their response was, you're inside her mind. This 25,000 square foot space of indoor, outdoor, live performance, galleries, stores, studios, 100 artists, the trials and tribulations, the doing things and failing, the doing things without permits, getting caught, manipulating things to happen, and like that we're actually still standing here in spite of all the odds. That's the story that you were trying to get out of me. Beaumont is a space for artists who are in business for themselves, doing something that they love and that they're passionate about. Everything from glass blowers to hat makers, we have a Milner in the space, a Milner is a hat maker. We've got fashion designers who've been through here, branding companies, we've had a blacksmith in here, we've had um, guys that make stereo systems, we've got quite a few music producers in here right now, a lot of painters, a lot of jewelry designers, potters. The Beaumont is my second home. It's where I run my business and it's where I like kind of run my passion. This is where I do all my art when I'm not working on movies. It's basically everything to me as far as as far as art in Vancouver goes. It was very important to build community in the space and so you can't get to your studio without making eye contact with the other artists. Anyhow, nice to see you. Have a great afternoon. Sore a little bit, you know, and your body's like I do, actually, I was, uh, well, thank you. Oh my God, look at us, we could be together. When I first opened this place, do you remember the guys at Sugar and Sugar, Jason and his brother? I remember inviting them down here to take a tour. And so we walked through and I was like, so this will be the gallery, this will be the theater. And they were like, literally, they stopped. They were like, listen, as long as your business model is not based on selling art, go for it. People just don't buy art in Vancouver. You go into most everybody's home and they've got, you know, eight different rooms in their home and almost each of those eight rooms probably has art on the wall. And yet somehow there's starving artists in Vancouver. Like, yeah. where is that art coming from? Yeah. Is it Ikea? Is it Winners? Is it Walmart? Like, why, well, are, why are you spending money at those places and how has that system become okay? Um, and, oh, there's my kid, sorry. Do your homework. Yes. I raised Lennox off the end of my desk here at the Beaumont, which seems like a like an amazing opportunity for a child to have, and it is an amazing opportunity for a child to have. I don't know what to say, guys. Uh, make up some homework to do, maybe. It's at the very early stages of COVID, her journey was me saying, "Get off the electronic devices, stop playing games all the time," to me saying, "Get on the electronic devices and do your homework." I could teach you about Canada. I was like, when she's 30 and she looks back on her life, she's either going to see her mom as this, like, just die hard, like, do your homework, or this mom who was like, I'm just going to show her the best time of her life. Some of her opportunities here have been, like, you know, one of the best birthday parties you could ever ask for. All of her and her girlfriends came down and we did, like, a photo shoot with them. Um, they had their hair and makeup done in Reggie's studio and they picked out clothes in the store. Um, and then we took them next door and we had our friend Steve do karaoke with them. But it's not, it hasn't ever been peaches and cream because, um, you know, you're still sitting at a desk working on things and trying to like hang shows. All of the burritos fell on the floor and a plate, and a, and a plate broke. You've got a toddler in diapers or you're breastfeeding in a meeting. And, and so thank God I had some amazing staff at the time and uh, my best friend working with me. Plague sing! Hello, Jude speaking. Running an art space while being a mom is already challenging. Then you had a pandemic? What do you do with this? We've been in dire straits many times here, not just, just through this pandemic. The, uh, the dire straits has been more about uh, affordability. Our property taxes were, I believe they were $57,000 and they've gone from $57,000 to $126,000 just to be filed. So where, where does this one go? It's just not sustainable. <laughs> pull out as needed. You know, we were losing our compadres, like left, right, and center. That was definitely a big thing, was like kind of saying goodbye to your friends. Where can I ring, like literally ring more money out of the Beaumont? Can we turn that closet into a studio? 
the radio station. Before it was a radio station, it was a loading bay. He looks, oh, he's so good. He's so good with graphic designs. You know, we don't even have an office for my staff. Our staff literally have to like find spaces in the building that they can sit down with their computer because we can't afford to give, you know, $700 space to my staff to work out of. We can't keep sustaining like this. We either have to go big or we have to go home, and I'll always go big. We moved all of our inside programming outside, turning the parking lot into a usable space. Done that, it's beautiful, the community loves it, and now the city is like, you, know, you need to take that down and put up a parking lot. It's just kind of like holding your, pulling your head up for like breath for a moment, and then you're like back underwater again. Where do we go from here? How do we, sus how do we sustain here and not have to rely on government funding and grants? And still service and give to your community what they need. Sometimes I feel like Beaumont just like breezed through me. It's not even me. It's like the Beaumont decided it was going to do these things to survive. Other studios were just like closing up like over the course of six months. And so when we were like, hey, the Beaumont's doing something, everybody in the city heard us. Um, so we were like, what can we do? Ford property in Vancouver. <laughs> Comedy nights, movie nights, um, theater nights, interactive installations, sound and light experiences, games rooms. We've got a glow in the dark pitch and putt area. The store, upcycling the clothing in the store. The gallery is constantly changing. For every, every month that you walk in here, there's like a new exhibition and the walls have been painted. When people come, their minds are blown so that by the time the pandemic is actually over, all those people have been through here and our voice is just bigger by that point. You step foot inside places like this and your, your world is just completely changed. People are, are, they've just taken something from nothing and turned it into art. I'd love to believe that um, <laughs> the community supports the arts as much as we believe they do. We'll see how Lennox uh, comes out the other side in the future with uh, looking back on uh, how she sees me and what I've done here. I have no idea who she's going to be and what her interests are going to be. I would hope that she would carry on and, and stay with this space and keep the, you know, the torch high and alive. Yeah, I, th I hope that she takes what she's learned from here and goes off and explores the world with you know, the same excitement that I have for this place with her own journey. Yeah, I, I hope it's here. <laughs>